This is the World on Water for November 8, and last week was a huge one for the French offshore racing teams. To give us the background on this US one day globe sailor, Ryan Braymore, was on Tom Ehrman's Sailing Illustrated, and he explained firstly what happened on Alec Thompson's Hugo Boss as they cut away their keel. He also reports on the Mini Transat, the 6.5 class, on its way to Martinique. He also tells us about the Altimes, the Mod 70s, as they race from Brest to an island off Rio de Janeiro, to another off Cape Town, and back to Brest. It's a fantastic race for these wonderful Mod 70s. And of course the Transat Jacques Fab. We have the latest reports from Day 7. So it's a French Sailing Week special as the Atlantic is dotted with hundreds of yachts and sailors all racing against each other in this wonderful sport. Now the story of Hugo Boss as it limps like a keelless America's cup boat back to the safe haven in Cape Verde. Over to Tom and Ryan. We're very pleased to have with us from, originally from the States, he grew up in Annapolis and now living in, and well he works really in Lorient which is the center of the world, center of the universe for offshore sailing, particularly French sailing, but really more than that. Ryan Braemeyer is a legitimate Eddie Cheever of offshore racing in France and otherwise. Until recently, Ryan was the sole American racing in an exclusive high priesthood of French sail, offshore sailing. He is a world-class yachtsman, previously nominated in this country for the Rolex Yachtsman of the Year, in fact, in 2015. Commodores, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ryan Braemeyer, our pro offshore sailor of, of considerable repute born in the U.S. and now living in Antibes, France. Hi, Ryan. Welcome. Hi, how are you doing? Good. I appreciate it, Tom. I appreciate all the kind words, John, as always. Yeah, it's um, it's been quite a ride since uh, St. Mary's College. When was that? 20, oh, 22 years ago I graduated from there. So the TJV is, is on now. And tell us, just give us your general impressions of the race. And then we'll go talk specifically about uh, Hugo Boss and Alex Thompson, who run into some serious trouble here of late. Yeah, well, so the the race in general, um, normally it starts off uh, uh, having to get out of the English Channel into a full-on winter gale. Uh, fortunately, this race did not start that way. It started off with uh, very reasonable conditions, um, and in fact, uh, some of the hardheads in the fleet decided that they would... Uh, go offshore to try to get to the closest winter gale, including Alex Thompson. Notably Alex Thompson, who went west. Well, <laughs> Notably. <yeah. laughs> he, always good at looking for the most wind and the toughest conditions, because uh, that makes you go the fastest. Um, so anyway, back to back to the whole thing. They, you know, the the fleet split early on, to, um, and then the, um, the option of going out to the low and getting a slingshot off of it did not materialize because the low didn't move close enough to the coast. Uh, which spread the fleets out uh, pretty heavily, at least the Amoka 60 and uh, Class 40 fleets. Um, the the three and the Multi 50 class all stuck together anyway, so you know that's a bit of a different story. Um, but it, so it has been more of a boat speed test than anything else for these guys, uh, upwind to start with, and, um, and then as they got partially down the Portuguese coast, uh, started getting into the more downwind conditions, which has been what they all want anyway, and why most of the fleet went uh, straight south to begin with, just to get into the downwind as quickly as possible without worrying about trying to catch a slingshot from a low to get more west in the doldrums and perhaps make it a bit easier to get across the doldrums. Um, so there we are. Well, let's, <clears throat> speaking of that now, we've, we've got a video that just came out earlier today about the problems that Alex Thompson has had. Uh, we've been watching this for the last, what, 24 to 30 hours, I guess, 36 hours, when yeah. their keel, what, what, one of the keel struts broke. Was that what originally happened? 
No, they, they ran into something in the water. Um, they most likely ran into either a very big whale or they ran into a more or less submerged container, a which container. is, uh, which is the more likely scenario. Uh, I, I would probably put money on that because they went from 25 knots to zero. Um, which is not, you know, normally if you hit a whale, you go from 25 knots to, to five knots and, and then you see the whale and it's a terrible thing, but it happens. Whereas when you hit a container, it's just a, a massive amount of destruction instantly, which is, which is what they found, you know. So the keel, the keel actually ripped off its mounts uh, in the boat, um, leaving it hanging from the hydraulic ram, which actually cants it back and forth. So that's uh, about as bad as it gets. Okay, guys. So we've we've got a little jimmy system here around the mast base. We've managed to get uh, managed. I've managed to get it around the. Uh, you can see around that safety ram there. I can't get it to get it up this far. We retracted the keel to do it, and I've detracted it a little bit. So there's a little bit of load on this. We have got a bit of a problem in that over here, uh, over here, we've got uh, this keel ram is trying to escape through there. I'm not sure how much of a problem that is. It doesn't sound very nice. Uh, put that down there for you. It's not really that much load on this. It's easier as to whether I can get a line around that keel ram. And actually, even if you get something round it, how do we how do we stabilize it fore and aft? Um, Anyway, we got somewhere, maybe. Well, yesterday evening, it was very clear that uh, we weren't going to be able to stabilize it. So we got our heads down, got some sleep, and, uh, and then this morning, we, uh, we cut the keel away. So uh, that involved uh, a grinder, some cutting discs, obviously some safety glasses, in it, and uh, very uncomfortable. It took hours and hours and hours. But uh, finally, um, we got three quarters of it done, and then all of a sudden, uh, while we were having a break, there was a little pop, and the keel popped out down to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, I said, and it popped. popped it makes out. you feel sick just watching that when you're, you imagine that you're in the process of uh, cutting all of the stability away from your boat like that. It's a, it's a terrible thing to have to do, but you can understand why he did it. And it's, oh God, feel bad for him. You really do. You know, the, the last TJV that he started with, uh, with Guillermo Altadil, they, they rolled the boat, uh, nearly destroyed that one. This TJV, he doesn't have good luck with TJV for whatever reason. So is he too aggressive? He used to be for sure, but he actually now is um is very 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 good. He was always very good, but now he's actually good at not being too aggressive. I mean that's it's not it's not too aggressive when you hit something. You know, it's just nothing you can do about it. And we all we all just you just have to put it out of your mind and pretend it's not there because you know imagine the the chance of you just. You know, a forty a forty foot long container, if you manage to hit it broadside, is still forty feet out of four thousand miles across the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. That's two hundred thousand what is that, four thousand, forty uh, two million feet, and you've got a container that yeah, might be minuscule. forty feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The chances of hitting it are almost none. Even if there was a hundred of them, you most of the time would sail right through it and not even know they were there. In, in a nutshell, what's going on with the mini the mini transat? Uh, the mini transat started their second leg, which is from uh, I'm not sure where they stopped somewhere in the Canary Islands or maybe Madeira. I'm not positive. Um, and they're on their way to Guadeloupe now, so they will have been sailed through by the class 40s, I think. Uh, maybe not even. Maybe maybe the uh, the TJV fleet has gotten passed before the minis started again. I'm not sure because the minis only started maybe two days ago. Hmm. Um, in any case, maybe the slow boats of the TJV were somewhere within the minis. But um, 
the interesting thing about it is that uh, the minis, uh, well, all of the French fleets are all are all tracked, and all of the data. Um, the mini sailors don't have it because that's part of the ethos of the mini is not to use all these electronic aids. But uh, the people doing the TJV will have the positions in real time of all of the mini sailors. Um, and then the all teams who are bearing down on both of these fleets will have um, will have the positions of everybody. So they're watching uh, them as, as weather vanes, as, as, as many weather stations. In effect, how fast are they going and what direction? Uh, yeah, they're probably not paying that much attention to it in the old team because they're they're so much quicker and their polars are so different. They're sailing their own angles anyway. But what they will be doing is they'll be downloading the position reports. Uh, the position reports are on an FTP and they're downloaded automatically into your navigation software. And so they show up as targets on your navigation software. So you know exactly where these people are at all times so you can avoid running into them. Because otherwise, you can imagine as the, uh, as the old teams come ripping through the fleet of class 40s that it's going to be like... Uh, going to be like mogul skiing for them. C'est la prévention du grand saut, je pense. Quoi. C'est ça Il y a une amie euh, qui m'a envoyé un message, j'ai l'impression d'atteindre le Nirvana. Quoi. <rire> La base, c'est une grosse aventure, j'ai arrêté ça depuis longtemps, donc là, c'est beaucoup d'émotion d'y aller vraiment et euh, je suis trop content. J'aimerais réussir à garder un top 10, quoi. C'est quand même une grande aventure, il y a pas mal de choses qui peuvent se passer. Du stress et du bon stress, euh, excitation, on va dire. Hein. Tout va bien, tous les voyants sont au vert, le bonhomme, le bateau, la météo, euh, et tout est bien. Si j'ai reprendre une troisième fois, c'est parce que, parce que je la veux, la mini, quoi. Juste hâte d'être sur l'eau quoi, et de faire cette grande traversée que je rêve depuis deux ans. J'ai l'impression que là c'est vraiment le saut dans le bambin. Euh, on... Là on ne sait pas du tout euh, ce qui nous attend quoi. Ah bah c'est de gagner. Avec euh, plus de 6 minutes 22 d'avance sur, euh, sur Axel. Il va falloir être bon, tenir dans la durée, euh, rien casser, euh, avoir le matos qui tient, euh, l'énergie, le pilote. Et... et si tout ça et les étoiles s'alignent, euh, j'ai envie de dire euh, pourquoi pas quoi. Et là, j'ai plus la sensation que c'est, on va vivre autre chose, quoi. Ça va pas être une, ça va pas juste être la course, ça va être autre chose encore. Je suis prêt à partir. Voilà. Accélère, go, 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 go. Talk, tell us about this race that's just leaving, has just left from Brest, from France, and is it separate from the uh, TJV? Yeah, it is. Actually, the, the Transit Jack Vab organizers uh, decided that they didn't want the old team class uh, involved in their race, um, basically because the old team take all the media away from all the other boats, and so they said, you guys can do your own thing. Uh, so they started their race today, actually, Um into the Bay of Biscay, into a giant storm. Um, it's blowing 30 to 35 with uh, five to six meter waves. So we're talking about, you know, 16 to 18 foot waves uh, and 35 knots of breeze. They they, they crossed the starting line uh, uh, doing 30 knots with two reefs in the main and no jib. Uh, so this is pretty, pretty big, pretty big stuff uh, from these boats, especially because the last time they went out during the route to rum, uh, Two of them returned, well, one returned broken and the other one never came back. So um, they put their money where their mouth is and sent those guys out there in it double-handed. And they're doing pretty well at this point. They're they're halfway across the Bay of Biscay after about eight hours of sailing. So it's uh, pretty amazing. Absolutely uh, I, amazing. I told you in the tech check, we had a, a video and I'll put it up on the website. And it's off of, it's Sotobo? Is that the boat that it was off, I think? Most we likely, We talked yeah. about it, yeah. And... This is you talk about you know the old days of the SORC or some races with the Ocean Triangles. Describe this course that they're on. This is not again not the TJV, but the this uh, yeah, other race. Yeah, they're sailing. It's called the Breast Atlantic, and they're sailing from uh, 
from Brest in the northwestern part of France, uh, around an island off of Rio de Janeiro, uh, to an island which is in Table Bay, quite near uh, quite near Cape Town, and then all the way back to Brest, nonstop, just rounding the islands, not not pulling into either city, uh, and it should take something a little bit over two weeks, two and a half weeks, something like that, to cover this fourteen thousand miles. So. Um, they're going to put up some big mileages. They basically were saying today in all of the media that came off the boats that they're just trying to keep the thing going slow enough not to break it going across Biscay so that as soon as they get past Cape Finisterre on the northwestern corner of Spain uh, and get into the downwind conditions that they can let them rip. Uh, and these are boats which are doing uh, over 40 knots downwind all the time. Basically, they're they're full flying if the, if the wave state is, is good enough to do it. And when they're full flying, they're, you know, they're at 45, 48 knots. And when they're, when they're half flying, they're doing 40 the whole time. So these, F- fully crewed, they eat, uh, two people on only board, two actually. Yeah. Double handed with a media man. So there's actually three people on board, only two of whom are, uh, are sailing the boat. And actually in one of the videos, it was only the video came back maybe six hours after the start. And in the video, you see one of the guys is already asleep. So they're, um, they're working hard at maintaining a rhythm where one guy is awake dealing with the boat and the other one is trying to get as much sleep as possible. Uh, and you know, sailing along at 30 knots in five meter waves, sleeping. <laughs> France to Rio uh, to Cape town to France. Yep. And how many days will that take? How, how long's the race and how many days? 14,000 14, miles, something like, I don't know, 22, 23 days, probably. départ, euh, c'est musclé comme on avait prévu. La mer est énorme. C'est la première fois de ma vie que je cherche plus à ralentir qu'à accélérer sur un bateau. Hein. <rire> on veut vraiment avoir arrivé euh, dans 10 heures avec un bateau sain euh, au Cap Finistère, donc c'est l'objectif. On, pour, on pourrait vraiment aller beaucoup plus vite. Euh, on voit que Massif est assez agressif. Euh, on arrive à suivre son rythme, mais on met vraiment la le frein à mort parce que on doit rien casser. On est enfin en bas bord, vous avez remarqué, on a changé de bord. Normalement, à travers la Jackbab, on fait 80% de ce côté-là. Et pour l'instant, on avait fait 80% de tribord. Donc là, c'est parti, tout droit jusqu'au poteau noir. Et Gilles, qu'est-ce que tu as à nous montrer Alors Aujourd'hui, c'est la promo du jour. Il y a deux îles pour le prix d'une. Et regardez-moi ça. C'est pas magnifique. C'est la baie de quoi tu La baie de Ça donne envie de s'arrêter, mais c'est pas au programme. T'as pas dit aussi, mais on est en t-shirt. Hein. Ça, on ça, en... ça fait du bien. On est en t-shirt, on a pris une douche et on a un beau coucher de soleil. Ouais. On bosse de prendre un peu de hauteur pour voir de ça. Allez, 3, 2, 1, go. Allez, 3, 2, 1, go. Pour l'instant, on est sous une attitude chaude, on a mis la crème solaire, il fait beau et on est vachement content. Il manque un peu de vent, mais on est content. Here on For My Planet, look what we have. Go 
got some friends! It's Eric, Nigon and Tolga on the Mont Saint-Sida. On a pété, on a décollé des vis. Et donc, euh, on repart. On fait de la résine et du carbone. Les petits chimistes. Good morning, the night stays behind us here pretty quickly. A new day, new luck, and finding excellent conditions. What is flying? What a flat sea. Yes, I'm going to go to the farm and I'm going to go to the farm. Salut à tous, encore une bonne, euh, une bonne session de, de bourrinage. Je suis sous spi. Clac, clac, clac. Jean, t'as quelque chose à dire Gilda, qui prend son petit déj, voilà qui reprend les forces. Voilà bon petit Gilda, on a bien bossé cette nuit, empanage, matosage, enfin voilà. So we're down into the trade winds now, made it past the Azores high last night, so uh... Happy about that, but you can see we're blasting along now with Code Zero. Ça fait combien de jours que t'as pas lavé ton bol euh, Ça fait combien de jours qu'on est parti 7 jours. jours. <rire> non, j'ai lavé une fois, une fois quand même. C'est dégueulasse. On voit pas les poissons dehors, mais les mains en avoir. Et puis, euh, on a quelques paquets de merde, vous pouvez voir. La tartine s'envoie du taquet. Comment on fait pour aller aussi vite euh, bah déjà on met la bonne voile, le Genec. Là on est sous grand Genec, euh, GV haute et J3. Il y a du vent qui rentre donc c'est pas mal, ça avance bien. On s'arrache à bord de Maître Coq avec du loup pour euh, remonter des places au euh, classement. toute la journée hier et puis euh, on a traversé la dorsale donc ça y est on est au portant dans les alizés allez c'est l'heure de la sieste ça bouge beaucoup ça fait beaucoup de bruit Mais on est bien installé c'est chaud un t-shirt Tu as mis ta veste d'été Ouais, ça y est, c'est l'été. <rire> ouais, c'est vrai que c'est impressionnant. Quoi. Les températures euh, montent super vite. Euh, là, on a vu déjà son bonnet euh, alors qu'on est parti il y a 24 heures. Euh. Ouais, ça, pour ça, c'est quand même euh, super agréable. On a l'impression d'aller vers le chaud. C'est quoi déjeuner là Hein Qu'est-ce qu'on fait sur déjeuner euh, Le déjeuner, bah, c'est toi qui vas nous le dire, non <rire> Euh, je sais pas, mais c'est vrai qu'on se fait des bons petits plats depuis le départ, c'est pas mal. On va, on va faire mijoter une petite marmite pour trois euh, bientôt. 